Hi, this is Dr. Mike, and I wanted to spend a few moments with you today talking about the introduction to our uh, studies this week in uh, Western civilization or world history, and just kind of give you some perspective to think about as you begin your studies. Uh, as a Christian and as a historian, uh, I am bound by you know several different uh, parameters of understanding history. And yet in Western civilization, we start our uh, history with the first civilizations when men kind of move from being hunters and gatherers to being uh, sedentary and uh, practicing agriculture, building cities. And that's usually traditionally where uh, Western civ starts in the history class. And so I want to just talk a little bit about the understanding of that, because we know that in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the first five books of the Pentateuch, that we do have some historical data there that uh, is, as best we know, written down by Moses a uh, you know, long time after the event. And so how do we count that? How do we believe that as, as Christians? How do we account for that? And yet most historians would say that we don't count that because there was no eyewitness account. We don't have someone leaving written records. So we start history basically with written records. And uh, that's that's why we start with the building of, you know, Sumer and the Egyptians and the Hebrews and things like that much, much later after they moved from hunters and gatherers to settled civilization building. Most of what, what, I, would cons what I would say with that after long years of studying, I have been studying uh, history and the Bible now for more than 50 years, is that as Christians, we take that by faith. Uh, those the first five books of Genesis as faith and uh, believe that it happened and that we accept that with some understandings. You have some really great lectures in this first week that raise issues about uh, the creation story and, and some of those events. You have those. What's really unique about the different civilizations that we study is that we have creation stories in uh, almost every civilization. I teach uh, Native American history, and I really enjoy reading some of the different creation or origin stories uh, with the Hopi or the Nav Navajo or all of them. They all have different stories of how they came to be on the earth. And the interesting thing about across the board is that there are certain elements in each of them that are very similar to uh, the Adam and Eve story in the book of Genesis. And so we realize that we, you know, probably, you know, that that lends weight then to us coming from a central ancestor, uh, uh, Adam and Eve. So you can look at that very carefully and and take it for what it's worth. But realize that we don't have the same uh, parameters for judging those books as you would say artifacts from Egypt or whatever. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit as a believer. Uh, I have great confidence in the Bible. I don't question the Bible. I don't. Uh, doubt its veracity. Uh, sometimes I get in trouble with my more fundamentalist brethren because they can make statements that they, they're not historians and they'll make statements uh, that would you know make me kind of step back and think about things. But there's nothing wrong with us looking, examining, understanding uh, the history as we, as we move through that. Having said that, it's really interesting to take the timelines that we have and uh, lay them down over scripture and, and realize that, that the, the Bible is in, in many instances, a it's not primarily a book of history, but it does contain some historical occurrences that, that have to make sense. For instance, the uh, Jews going to Egypt or the, the sons of, of going to, Jacob going to Egypt to uh, escape the famine. And we know from studying Egyptian history that the traditional Egyptians were anti-shepherd. They didn't like shepherds. And so how do we account for the fact that they take in this family of 12 brothers and Joseph rise to power? And uh, when we put the template of our, our timelines down over Egyptian history, we, we realize that there were two timeline, two periods between the, the major three dynasties in Egypt called the inner, inner period, the inner kingdom periods, where that could have happened. And then one of those in particular, a group called the Hyksos were in power. And uh, we think that's when the, the Israelis came to Egypt and 
Then you find that rather odd scripture that says, and then there was a Pharaoh that arose that didn't know Joseph, which pretty much meant the Egyptians came back to power and they enslaved them. So there's a lot of little things like that that we can correlate and uh, teaching the Bible along uh, the history alongside the Bible uh, is a great, uh, great instance. In the way of create the creation narrative, I wanted to say that I have a, a rather unusual job uh, in in front of me. I am writing a book by Dr. about Dr. Charles Towns, who was from Greenville, South Carolina, just down the road from Montreat, uh, who was uh, who who won the Nobel for his work on the uh, on discovering the laser, 1964 Nobel Prize, and then he went into astrophysics and was part of the, the Apollo moon landing. And then uh, when I met him, I, I went to interview him to write his life story. He was still teaching at Caltech Berkeley at 98 and was still mentoring students and writing papers and doing research and all those things. But in his latter years, he won the 2005, uh, 2005 uh, Templeton Award in religion for attempting to bring back the dialogue between science and the Bible that was fractured in the 1800s by Darwin and Lyle and their, their statements about the uh, age of the earth and about evolution. And so he kind of dumped that in my lap and said, look, you're, uh, you've trained in both fields of theology and science. Why don't you take this project for me and see, and see where you can take it? So I'm probably working on that. Maybe my uh, dissertation for my history, uh, history uh, PhD, but uh, on the warfare between science and religion. And uh, I think that that was alluded to in one of your videos, this, this battle that started in the 1800s. There are two books by almost the same title that were written in the late 18, early 1900s called The Warfare Between Science and Religion. And it has continued to be a warfare. It was a warfare in the 19, uh, 1920, around 1920, with the smallpox vaccination. Uh, we still see the warfare going on today with the COVID vaccination. So it's very much there. This, this aspersion cast upon science uh, by believers who, uh, who think there is some kind of irreparable breach there that can't be breached between science and the Bible. And I would contest that that's not true, that, uh, that it is about, as, as the gentleman said in your lecture on creation, it is about the perspective that we approach those things with. Having said that, I posted in the announcements last night a um, document called the, the, the Five C's of Historical Thinking. And I would like for you to be sure that you read that. I would like to hear back from you about that. It's a very good document about how we as historians, including you now as a, a student in this history class, that makes you a historian as well, how we perceive and how we go about our our business of understanding the world of the past that we live in. Uh, and you realize that the study of history is fairly a fairly new phenomenon. Uh, it was really spurred by Napoleon when he and his armies captured Egypt and they were they found this culture that no one knew anything about that went back into the into the ages of the past and with all the hieroglyphics and the pyramids and things, uh, the world didn't know a great deal about that. I mean, Egypt had only been conquered, uh, you know, a couple of times. Alexander the Great and Napoleon were about it. And so they found this world of the past that just intrigued people to no end. And they discovered the Rosetta Stone, which was a major discovery into how to translate things like hieroglyphics into Greek and, of course, then from Greek to other languages. And so he began sending these artifacts back to Europe and, and generated this great interest in the past. And so from about 1800s forward, history became a major uh, part of the, the academic world. And of course, went through several different periods of understanding. And uh, of course, it, it also further alienated religion in the church in the late 1800s when the German uh, structural criticism came about and said that even the Bible should be subject to reason uh, and just like any other science. Uh, and so basically we have this warfare becoming greater and greater as we move into the 20th, uh, 20th century. Uh, most of my research has been around the Scopes monkey trial of 
25 in evolution uh, and science. And of course, the, the, this was the rise of Christian fundamentalism, which came out of World War I. Uh, all three monotheistic religions, and this is unique, uh, seem to have turned and gone back into the Dark Ages after World War I. The Muslims, with the fall of the Ottoman Empire, left this huge vacuum in the Muslim world, and uh, they turn and go back into the Dark Ages, and, and many of them become what we see today with, with terrorism and everything of that sort. The Jews go into Zionism, advocating for a homeland, and Christians uh, become centered upon a, an escapist theology uh, of we're not going to change the world because they thought really that they had reached the pinnacle that Christianity was the most enlightened religion on the planet in 1893 at the World's Fair in Chicago. They convened a symposium of all the great religions of the world, basically to show off how Christianity was the most enlightened religion. And then in 20 years, we have World War I, which was mainly Christians killing Christians. And so that just kind of shattered the whole idea of Christendom. And so they turn and go into this fundamentalism, adopt this uh, premillennial type of doctrine, uh, which we're leaving the world. So why fix it up? Why, you know, why, why put glass in the window panes when you're leaving anyway? And so they become the purveyors of a particular strand of theology uh, called premillennial dispensationalism that carries us well up to the, to the present time. I'm actually attempting to finish a book on the Scopes trial, Rise of Christian Fundamentalism, to explain how the Christian right has gotten into political power in the last days. So it pro ought to prove to be quite uh, interesting. So I hope these things will kind of whet your appetite. I, you don't have to agree with me. Uh, we all walk out onto a battlefield as historians. We'll pick up different things and we'll come up with different conclusions. But we do need to survey the entire field and and try to make sense out of the narrative that we that we piece together of the world and its events, and so that's what we're doing now with uh, with the uh, this class in Western civilization, and it is a survey. So in eight weeks, we look at a lot of a lot of periods of time. We we'll have a lot of discussions. I encourage you to engage in the discussion boards. Don't just put your stuff up and leave it. Uh, people will respond to you. Continue the conversation. I'll be there as well, conversing with you and, and talking about your perspectives and maybe we broaden that. So when we walk away, we want to know more than when we came, myself included. Uh, I am a learner. I am a lifetime, lifelong learner. I have been in school 57 out of my 65 years. Uh, my PhD in history will be my last degree. Maybe that will be my 10th. Uh, and I really have been attempting to learn and to grow and to to do the things that uh, I do because it's my passion. History is my passion. And I want to share that passion with you. Maybe you have, haven't liked history in the past. Maybe you've had an experience that's kind of, uh, you know, killed your, your love for history. I want to reignite that passion. And we build on that. We find something we're interested in. Uh, to be honest, I'm not interested in every piece of history. There, they, I, I'm not a Civil War buff. I, I, I study the Civil War in relation to American religious history, which is my, my uh, expertise. And you realize the Civil War happened during one of the greatest religious revivals in the history of the world, and they were killing each other, and God was on both sides. And so they'd go out and fight every day, come back, hold religious services, get right with God, go out and do it again. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does that? But and that's not my, the war is not something that I'm interested in. I am interested in the great revivals like Second Great Awakening. I'm interested in the industrial age that finished the 1800s, the history of science uh, and the history of technology. Those things all have interest. And I have built upon those things uh, to put together a, a modicum of knowledge that I hope to share with you. So find something you're interested in. Uh, engage us on that. Let us talk about it and uh, start building some knowledge. And before you know it, uh, you'll like you'll like history better and you'll read everything you can get your hands on uh, based upon that. So let me encourage you to, to do just that. Lastly, let me say to you that I'm here to help you. I'm here to make you successful. I'm here for you to leave this course having learned something. I want you to leave saying this is the best class I've ever taken. 
and I will do my very best to fulfill that promise. Don't be afraid to call me. You have my number. Uh, you have my email. Don't be afraid to contact me. And never run from a teacher that runs after you wanting to be, be a part of your life. Uh, you'll get very few of those in life. I have I only had a handful of teachers that uh, challenged me, that I enjoyed interacting with. They're still my friends today, and uh, they mean a great deal in my life. So until next week, um, I will, unless I come across something really phenomenal I want to share with you that I think about, uh, I will try to do this in one uh, short lecture a week, but uh, if it becomes overpowering, you may get an email, you may get a, a video from me at 2.30 in the morning. Don't be surprised by that because I do some of my best work at night in the middle of the morning. Until then, thank you for being here. I'm looking forward to having a great time over the next weeks and let's learn some history. Thank you so much.